soybean population. What's the right population for a farmer? What should he plant? Well, that's a great question because it's going to vary depending on where you live and also what variety you plant. Uh, for example, row spacing. Yeah. yeah, there are a number of things. Well, let, let's just say that you've got a real thin line plant, one main stalk, not a lot of branching. You know, compare that to something that likes to bush out, that genetically is going to put on a couple major side branches. Uh, I mean, it's got great big arms on it you're going to have to plant them at a little different population to be able to compete effectively. If you've got that thin line plant, you're going to need a little bit more population. Okay, but here are two things that you have to know about soybeans that are completely different from corn. Number one, soybeans can branch out and they can bush out more if there's more space available to them. If you don't have them planted thick enough, they can compensate that way. Also, if you plant them too thick, soybeans can self-thin. They can put on fewer branches and I mean, they, there's just so much adjustment there. So literally, you could go from 80,000 planting population to 380,000 planting population. And in some cases, in some varieties, you might not see much difference in yield at all. But I will guarantee you that if you plant four times or five times as much corn as something side by side, you're going to have a definite difference in yield. Let, let's talk about this just a little bit because here's where a lot of it has started in the upper Midwest as Iowa State really focused on soybean planting population a few years back. And what they ended up coming up with was a little bit surprising to farmers. A lot of farmers were planting around 150 to 180,000 population in a 30 inch row and they were varying slightly from that as they went to a drill or went to a wider row spacing. And what Iowa State found is around 80,000 final stand was enough to maintain maximum yield potential. And so some farmers of course thought, well, if I only need to end up with 80,000, I'll just use a seed treatment and start with 80 or 100,000 and I should be fine, right? <laughs> well, the problem is in Iowa State's trials, they had to do it this way in order to get uh, the kind of trial they wanted, but they hand weeded those plots. They made sure there were no stress out there that they could prevent. I mean, they did everything just right. You aren't going to do that on your farm. You're going to farm it like you're farming a thousand acres. You're not out there hand weeding each square foot of that field and you can't seed it exactly just right. So 80,000 is, well, it's a huge, huge risk. So we have to plant just a little bit more to accommodate for things like light hail, insect feeding, those kind of real world problems that we have. The question is, how much more than 80,000 do I really need? Okay, so back many years ago, our dad was running planting population studies on a fairly regular basis, especially when he switched from 30 intro beans down to drilled soybeans. And he went as high as 300,000 planting population. That was the very best yield he had in soybeans. It beat the 250, it beat the 200. What he found is he really couldn't tell the difference between 250,000 and 300 or even 350,000 in terms of net economic gain. So yes, he gained just a little bit in yield, but he also had to spend a little more for seed. Okay, well now, since we've gone to 30 inch rows and we have seed treatment, we have great seed, good seed quality and everything, we're getting most of our stand. We're getting 90% or more that's growing out in the field. Okay, so that's one of the things that we've got going for us today. The other thing that we have going is the varieties are a little bit different and we're getting a lot higher yield. And I think what's happened is back years ago, our dad never seemed to have much at all for disease entering into the soybeans. Now we spray fungicide at least once and in some fields we're even spraying twice with fungicide post-emerge. Even in dryland South Dakota, we're getting disease problems. Well, if you widen the rows and go out to 30 inch rows and also you thin down the planting population, it seems like you have a little bit less disease because you have more air movement in there. Yes, but here's the trade-off, Brian. When you think about that thinning down of your population, now you also have less crop canopy and more yep. of a chance for weeds to break through. And we're seeing so many of those late emerging weeds, like the pigweed species, like lamb's quarters, like velvet leaf, those kind of weeds are starting to break through. And, and actually I saw some data this summer from another trial that Iowa State was doing to follow up to their planting population studies about weed control and the higher the population, the better the weed control they had, the narrower the row spacing, the better weed control. So you have to think about some of those things, especially as you're starting to have trouble controlling certain weed species, 
you could increase your planting population and maybe even narrow up your rows a little bit. That will help you with weed control. Okay, I just wanted to show you our study that we ran in 2011 on our own farm, and we've done this many times over the years, and statistically there was no difference. But the highest yield actually was the lowest planting population, which was around, well, it was a little under 100,000. For, for planting population. And again, most of that we got as final stand. We had 90, 95% germination, good stand, good seed treatment, all that was great. But I, I guess I don't feel comfortable planting that low of a population because like Darren said earlier, if we get a little bit of hail, we have you know some minor stand issues or anything, I'm just not very comfortable with it. So we're planting 140,000 seeds per acre on our farm in soybeans in 30 inch rows. That's what we think is about the best, and we've cut that down over the years. We used to plant 250,000 in the drill. We got down to 150,000 when we went to 30 inch rows. Now we're down to 140,000 because we got seed treatments and better seed and everything. I don't know that we're going to go a lot lower than 140 Darren on our farm. Well, planting population is sure one of those things that guys look at, and especially you know with soybeans, when the cost of the soybean is now you know, 40 or even $50 an acre for the seed. Yep. You say, wow, here's something, maybe I, I need can to trim that a little up a little bit, bit yep. and that could make a difference on my bottom line. Well, another thing that'll make a huge difference on your bottom line is if you control our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up later in the show.